Okay, this is the acids and bases from the November 2020 paper 2. This is the paper that the uh, that leaked and has to be rewritten. So now there's no official memo for this, so I'm making a disclaimer here. These opinions are my own. They're not based on the memo, so if something's wrong, well, something's wrong. Okay, but at least I know you should have all tried this question. So it says to you, ethanoic acid is an ingredient of household vinegar. Is ethanoic acid a weak acid or a strong acid? Give a reason for your answer. Well, we know it's a weak acid. And remember when you answer that it's a weak acid, you must say it is a weak acid because it does not completely dissociate in water. And remember the second half of the definition says, leaving a low concentration of hydronium ions. So remember to write, the low concentration of hydronium ions, otherwise you won't get your full two marks. Now it says to you, an ethanoic acid solution has a pH of 3.85 at 25 degrees. Calculation, the, calculate the concentration of hydronium ions in this solution. Well, this one is nice and straightforward. We write the formula, pH equals minus log H3O plus. Remember to write the formula from the data sheet and then substitute so 3,85 that is the pH and it is equal to minus log the hydronium ion concentration. So now if you remember your logs from your maths you will know that the inverse operation of this log thing is to say this is 10 to the power of negative 3,85 Failing that, you just clap the shift button on your calculator. So you know there's the log button. So you go shift log and you remember to put in the minus sign and you say minus 10 to the power of 3,85. And this is going to give you a hydronium ion concentration. Don't forget your units of 1,41 times 10 to the negative 4. Goodness me, that does not look like a 4. 10 to the negative 4 moles per cubic decimeter. Now remember, no unit, no mark. And also remember, um, um, it's a concentration, so it's in moles per cubic decimeter. Now it says to you, sodium ethanoate forms when ethanoic acid reacts with sodium hydroxide. So we've got ethanoic acid, an acid, and sodium hydroxide, a base. Okay, but now this is a weak acid and this is a strong base. So if you remember, this is related to hydrolysis of salts, but the easy way to remember is, are you going to have an acidic or a basic salt? The reason to know if you've got an acidic or a basic salt is look at whichever is the stronger one of the two. And the base is strong, so the base is winning out. So this is going to be a basic salt. Okay, so then remember your pH table. If you are less than 7, you are an acid. If you are equal to 7, you are neutral, which this won't be because it was a titration of a weak acid with a strong base. So this answer will be greater than 7. Okay, now it says explain the answer with the aid of a balanced chemical equation. So now I'm not sure if they want you to put in this equation the whole of sodium ethanoate or just realize it's the fact that the ethanoate ion by itself that is what is making the salt basic. So if you put the whole salt in, okay, here's your salt CH3, COO, and this would be minus, it's the uh, iron, the, the ethanoate iron. So that's sodium ethanoate, and we are going to put it in water because this is hydrolysis of a salt. So we are adding water. And remember, whatever's on the left must end up on the right. So what happens in actual fact here is the ethanoate iron comes and takes a proton off the water, and it returns back to this, but it is producing sodium hydroxide as it does so. If you want it without the um, the whatnot, the, the, the sodium ion, because the sodium ion is effectively a spectator ion, it would look like this, okay? So you have water there, and then um, you can then end up with this, and then, um, oh, it's not that. It ends up with ethanoic acid, 
plus a hydroxide ion. So if you're producing a hydroxide ion from water, you are effectively making a base. So that makes it a basic salt because it's in this equilibrium thing. So ideally this should actually be a double arrow because it is kind of an equilibrium reaction. This will act as um, a buffer. But for now, because they want you to show why, you should put the single arrow. So now this is the equation that I'm not 100% sure of until you see the memo to see where they want to give you your, your balanced equation. But the explanation is, is that um, the salt uh, makes hydroxide ions, which makes it basic. Okay, so hopefully I'm not talking nonsense there. So now I know the calculation. Some of you are more concerned about the calculation. So it says household vinegar contains 4,52% ethanoic acid by volume. So when you go to the supermarket and you buy vinegar, it's actually vinegar mixed with water. But there's only 4,52% vinegar inside the water. Okay, so now it says to you a 1,2 gram impure sample of calcium carbonate is added to household vinegar. So we've got an acid plus a metal carbonate that is going to give you a salt, water and carbon dioxide gas. So if we have a look what's going on here, I always like to draw a little picture. We have here a little container and we put in here some calcium carbonate. Okay, here's my calcium carbonate and we put in here vinegar. Okay. I'm not writing the whole CH3COH thing. But we had 25 cubic centimeters of vinegar here and we had 1,2 grams of calcium carbonate. So these two then reacted. Imagine little bubbles of carbon dioxide gas coming off and we are going to end up with the um, calcium ethanoate salt. And it says to you here there was excess vinegar so basically the calcium carbonate will disappear so you don't see it because it's become a more soluble salt and then you will have here the excess vinegar okay now they say to you on completion of the reaction on reaction the excess ethanoic acid is neutralized by sodium hydroxide solution so here you took your excess vinegar okay and you added in here sodium hydroxide. So this is basically a titration reaction. So now it says to you the balanced equation for the reaction is this. Calculate the number of moles of unreacted ethanoic acid. So this excess vinegar over here in this container, this is basically unreacted because we had an initial amount that we put in. This is my initial amount of vinegar. It reacted with the calcium carbonate, leaving behind unreacted moles of vinegar here. So the way to calculate the unreacted ethanoic acid is to go backwards here. You have to know what did the sodium hydroxide react with because it reacted with the excess vinegar. So you know from the question, okay, it says the vinegar is neutralized by 14,5 cubic centimeters of a sodium hydroxide of concentration, one mole per cubic decimeter. So that is what is going on, and it will take us back to the value of the excess vinegar. So if we want to work out the value of the excess vinegar, we have to work out how much sodium hydroxide we've got. So let's have a look here, 7.2.1. We need to work out how many moles of sodium hydroxide did we add. So the number of moles of sodium hydroxide is going to be the concentration times the volume. So the concentration was one mole per cubic decimeter. Remember it's over here in the question. And the volume is 14,5 cubic centimeters, which we may not put as 14,5 cubic centimeters. We have to convert it to cubic decimeters. So we end up with 0 0,0145 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now from the balanced equation, there's one mole of sodium hydroxide to one mole of vinegar. So we need to let the examiner know that we know that we found the sodium hydroxide. Okay, it's one mole of sodium hydroxide to one mole of vinegar. So if we had 0, 0,0145 moles of sodium hydroxide, we will have 0, 0,0145 moles of vinegar. So then we can give our final answer. 
unreacted, unreacted ethanoic acid. Excuse the abbreviations, we're running out of space. Equals 0, 0,045 moles. Okay, so that's fine. We've now got the unreacted ethanoic acid. So now that was easy, three marks. It says calcium carbonate reacts with ethanoic acid according to the following balanced equation. So now when they start talking about this balanced equation here, okay, this equation over here is what is going on over here, okay? We were previously working with the second half, but now we're working with the first half. So it says to you, calcium carbonate reacts with ethanoic acid according to the following balanced equation. So let's read the equation quickly here. So there's one mole of calcium carbonate to two moles of vinegar giving you um, calcium ethanoate, water, and carbon dioxide gas. It says calculate the percentage calcium carbonate in the impure sample if one cubic centimeter of household vinegar has a mass of one gram. So what they're basically trying to tell you is that for every cubic centimeter of vinegar, one cubic centimeter of vinegar will weigh one gram. And in the beginning, we had 25 cubic centimeters, okay? But there's one other fact that you have to pay attention to here. It's this one over here. It says household vinegar contains, and this was not supposed to be that color. It was supposed to be this lovely color here. Household vinegar contains 4,52% ethanoic acid by volume. So what we should do here is we want to figure out how much of this ethanoic acid is water and how much is the actual acid because the water is going to do nothing it's only the ethanoic acid that's going to react so we started out with 25 cubic centimeters so we want to say here 4,52% of 25 cubic centimeters and this is going to give us the volume of ethanoic acid so this is 1,13 cubic centimeters of vinegar. So that would be pure ethanoic acid, not the vinegar we bought in the store because that's ethanoic acid plus water. This is the actual amount of uh, ethanoic acid. So we should write this as ethanoic acid, not the bottle of vinegar. Okay, but now it says to you one cubic centimeter weighs one gram that's what it says to you here one cubic centimeter of household vinegar has a mass of one gram so i shouldn't say weighs i should say has a mass goodness me imprecise speech one cubic centimeter has a mass of one gram so if i've got one comma one three cubic centimeters it will have a mass of one comma one three grams now, anytime we have a mass of anything, we can use our handy periodic table. And if we work out what is the big M, the relative molecular mass for ethanoic acid, you're going to find that it is 60 grams per mole. So we can now take this mass of vinegar that was in the original sample, because remember, it was vinegar and water, so with the percentage purity, and its um, mass per unit volume, we can now work out how many moles of vinegar we've got. So the number of moles of vinegar that we've got, goodness, I'm running out of room here. The number of moles of vinegar that we've got in the initial solution is going to be M over M, which is 1,13 over 60. So if you put that into your calculator, you will get something like 0, 0,01883. Now remember, keep the number in your calculator or make sure while you're inside the calculation, you're working with a lot of decimal places because otherwise it will get too confusing here, okay? So now that's how much we put in initially. This is the initial amount, but we don't want to know the initial amount. We want to know how much reacted because how much reacted will tell us how much calcium carbonate was in there initially so what we have to do is we have to take the initial minus the excess to find out what reacted so remember 
this unreacted here is the excess so we're going to be 0 comma 0 1883 minus 0 comma 0 145 and this is going to give you something like 4 comma 3 3 times 10 to the negative 3 moles okay sorry you can't see the mole thing there okay so now we figured out how much vinegar reacted and the vinegar had to react with this calcium carbonate okay and only the pure calcium carbonate not the impurities will react so we need to use the mole ratio again from the second equation because that's what we are looking at the calcium carbonate plus the vinegar so the mole ratio of calcium carbonate to the ethanoic acid is according to the balanced equation there are two of these and one of these so if I had 4,33 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of ethanoic acid, this will be, look, this is the big number 2, this is the small number 1. This will be 4,33 times 10 to the negative 3. We must make this number smaller by dividing by 2. And we will end up with, ah, this is very irritating, 2,166, sorry, it's not in the correct column, but you know this belongs in the um, calcium carbonate column. 2,166 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, moles of calcium carbonate. Okay, so now let me do some rubbing out so that we've got a place to work here. So let me rub out over here. Goodness me, it's taking long to rub out here. Okay, hopefully that's enough space up here now. Okay, so we've now figured out how many moles of calcium carbonate reacted, but it asked you the percentage purity. Okay, so you know for percentage purity, you need to know the mass of the pure calcium carbonate over the mass of impure, and to turn it into a percentage, we multiply it by 100. So we need to turn these moles into mass. So the mass of the calcium carbonate is going to be the number of moles times the relative molecular mass and if you look in the periodic table and you add it all up it comes to 100 grams per mole so we've got this 2,166 times 10 to the negative 3 moles and we are multiplying by 100 to give you the mass of calcium carbonate so this ends up being 0, 0,2167 grams and that is this is my pure okay so then to work out the percentage purity, we put the pure over the impure. And the impure is what we put in in the beginning, and it's in the question here, 1,2 grams. And don't forget to multiply by 100 to turn it into a percentage. And you should end up with 18,06%. So now I'm pretty sure of this answer. The only thing I'm not sure about is exactly which equation they would look for in 7.1.3 but this answer here I'm quite happy with okay